Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. As you can see out my window, fall is here. Fall is my favorite time of year to shoot landscape and nature photography. Who doesn't love the crisp clean air, the sight of beautiful colors all around, the sound of campfires to warm the body and the soul, the smell of rotting leaves all around you? Well, I, I, I like that smell. In this week's video, I'll talk about the steps I take to get ready for a fall or autumn foliage shoot. The challenge around shooting the fall foliage in nature for someone who works full-time at a day job is timing the colors just right and getting to the location when the colors are before or at peak. So one of the first things that I like to do is I utilize the fall foliage reports that you can find online. There are some great websites that can help you identify the right time to go out and shoot when the foliage is at peak. I live in upstate New York, so I tend to use the I Love New York website to review their fall foliage report to see where the fall leaves will be near peak or at peak times and they're going to be at their most beautiful colors. Another great site to check out if you are planning to travel to another part of the country, whether you're going to New England uh, or maybe you live in the Midwest or out in the West, is the smokymountains.com slash fall dash foliage dash map site. This gives you an interactive map where you can actually select the date that you plan on being in that location and will tell you what the fall foliage will look like or at least predict as close as it can what the fall leaves will look like uh, as they state down here there's no tool it can be 100 percent accurate but at least it gives you an idea of where to be at a certain time and wh what the fall foliage will look like during that time so for us in upstate new york the last couple of weeks have been either partial or near peak and here we are, October 17th, going into the uh, week ending October 24th, and you can see that we're past peak. But there are plenty of other places further south as the cold air starts to creep down toward the south and, and across the country. There are lots of beautiful places to go where you can capture fall foliage and, and capture some great fall photography. Then once I've selected an area or two that I'm interested in, then I may go earlier in the season, right before the colors are due to change, to find the best locations and the best compositions so that I don't have to try to do all of that work when the colors are at peak. Especially during the autumnal season, the days are shorter, there isn't a whole lot of time in the day to scout out the best compositions, set up and photograph. And during this time of year, there are infinite numbers of compositions to be had. So I try to scout out what I envision as the best scenes. And then if I capture anything along the way after my planned shoot, that's just icing on the cake. So step three, 
when you're at your desired location, then the obvious thing to do is to shoot the beautiful landscapes. I'll set up my tripod and ensure that my camera and lens settings are all set. So, number one, I make sure to turn off the image stabilization while I'm on the tripod. The whole time that the, that the camera's sitting on the tripod, if your image stabilization is on, whether it's on the lens or on the camera, it'll constantly be trying to adjust and because it thinks that it's looking for um, a way to stabilize the camera. The wind might come in and blow the camera and it's trying to stabilize it um, or any little movement. But what, end, what ends up happening is all of your photos will end up looking soft and you won't have that clean, sharp image that, you're, that we're all striving for. Secondly, if I'm not shooting moving water, then I'll put the camera into aperture priority with an ISO of 100 and let the camera select the speed. The only caveat to this is if it's windy. I don't want the leaves to be blurred in my photo unless that's the look that I'm intending to, to capture. So I'll set the camera to manual mode select a speed of around 1 125th 1, or 1 250th of a second with an aperture setting of f11 and then I adjust the ISO in order to ex get the exposure that I'm looking for. If I do want to show the movement of the leaves to give the image a more painterly feel then I'll slow the speed down to 1 30th of a second or 1 15th of a second and I leave my aperture at f11 and then I'll adjust my ISO accordingly. If I'm shooting moving water in the scene and I want it to have that dreamy, milky look, then I'll put the camera in speed priority with an ISO of 100 and see where my aperture setting lands. If the aperture is too wide, then I'll narrow it down to the expected setting by adjusting my ISO. Next, I'll go in and I'll check my white balance. I like to shoot most of my fall scenery in a cloudy setting so I'll put the white balance mode into uh, into the cloud icon that's on your camera since this tends to help warm up the image and enhance all those beautiful red orange and yellow hues but if you forget this step as long as you're shooting in raw format you should be able to adjust this in post processing as well Don't forget to shoot the details. So step number four, I often like to search for compositions on the ground. I like to look for complementary colors and isolate subjects that really depict what the fall season's all about. The other thing that I'll do is I'll set my camera up so that I can shoot the leaves with backlighting. You can get some real interesting details in the leaves when you shoot with the sun right behind the leaves. Plus, it, it just makes the leaves glow when you put the sunlight right behind them, and it helps enhance their colors and really bring out all those details. If it's cloudy out, you can get some great photos due to the wide, even lighting on the entire scene. And if it's raining, all the better. The rain will help bring out the colors of the foliage, which leads me to my final tip. So I don't carry a lot of filters in my backpack, but I do carry certain ones. I'll carry uh, group neutral density filters in order to be able to slow down my shutter speed if, I, if I'm in bright sunlight and I really want to get that wispy look in, in the water. Um, but really the other filter that I'll always carry with me is my circular polarizer. I find that this filter is great for enhancing colors and removing any glare from wet leaves and rocks. Some of that type of work can be done in post-processing, but I prefer to get it right in camera and not have to make any additional adjustments in the digital darkroom. I'd rather spend more time outdoor shooting than being behind a computer all day, but it just adds some additional richness and saturation to the colors that, that I just love. What are your thoughts? Do you prefer to use filters in the field or do you prefer using uh, digital filters in post-processing? Let me know in the comments below.
finally, as just a bonus tip, make sure you print your photos. You've taken a lot of work to go out and actually shoot the fall foliage and capture all that beauty. So when you get back home, take the time to pick out some of your favorite images and print them out. Whether you do it yourself or send it out to have uh, it printed at a print house, having that tangible photo in your hands makes all that work you did before and during the photo session all worthwhile. These are just some examples of photos that I mounted on wooden canvases and then epoxied over the top of them. The epoxy just really brings out and enhances all the fall colors and gives it that really rich look and it protects the photo being underneath that epoxy. So if you're interested in this technique on how I epoxy my own images on wooden canvases, then leave a comment below and I'll record another video that actually goes through step by step on how I actually do this entire process. I hope that these tips will help you with your autumn and fall photography. Please leave a comment, question, or suggestion down below, and it really helps out the channel if you give the video a thumbs up so that YouTube will make it available to a larger audience. And if you like this type of content, feel free to share the link and subscribe below. Make sure to click that notification bell so you're alerted when the next video comes out. I hope you have great success in shooting your own fall photography, and as always, thanks for taking time to watch the video. Now get outside and capture great light. <laughs> Guess I forgot to tighten that knob. I'm like, what the heck? As a blooper. <laughs> Tighten all the knobs. <laughs> Key tip. <laughs>